No parent likes to hear their baby cry. And as a mother, we are wired to respond to the cries of our baby. It's, it's part of nature that it just hits you in a spot that makes you want to fix the situation. None of us like hear, hearing a baby cry, but it is part of their communication as well. And it's really important to be able to distinguish from a baby that's crying through sadness, pain, or, or suffering in some way, to a baby that's just trying to tell you something. It's a question that comes up all the time in relation to the topic of sleep. And often a sleep deprived parent is more likely to respond to cries in a whole range of different ways when it comes to sleep, um, when they perhaps would respond differently in the cold light of day. We've talked about this in various different ways a few times in the past, and it's a question that never goes away. So, this week's episode of The Sleep Nanny Show is a best bits episode where I am gonna pull for you all the best tips I can give you to fully understand crying, know how to read those cries, best ways to respond to them, and just the concept of crying and teaching a child to sleep. It doesn't mean that um, you're going to put a child through lots of crying in order to teach them how to sleep. There are so many ways of doing it so kindly and responsibly, which is what we're all about here at Sleep Nanny. So here we go with this Best Bits episode. I hope you find it helpful and don't forget to leave your comments below. Sleep training in my mind is actually about helping uh, a child to become a very skilled independent sleeper at a pace that's right for them, in line with their actual cognitive ability, developmental abilities, um, and also in line with their personality, their temperament, their sleep needs, so many other factors. So sleep training is effectively just helping to uh, develop, enhance or master uh, sleep skills, which we all need. The ability to settle to sleep and back to sleep is a learned skill. It's important to know that from the outset. It's not something we just get, it's really not. And even though you might know families and you might have a friend who think, oh, they're so lucky, they didn't have to do any sleep training, they actually did, they just didn't know they were doing it. So they either got into a very simple routine or they just set up some very basic cues. They may not have even known that they were doing it. It was just instinctive. The child's possibly an easygoing, go with the flow sort of temperament. It just clicked. What the parent did, what the child needed, it just clicked and it just happened. Nevertheless, that child was still, in some way, taught how to settle to sleep. So it's not, it's not cruel if it's done in the right way for you and for your family and for your child's needs and your parenting philosophy, etc. <laughs> it's not cruel um, when it's done gently and kindly and at the right pace. And there's more and more pressure um, and more and more controversy around you know, the baby's crying, quick, quick, you've got to somehow magically make it better. Sometimes you can't make it better no matter what you do. What's important is that you're responding. You're responding consistently. Um, you're showing that you're there for your child, that you love your child, and they're responded to. That's the real key piece. And crying isn't bad, it's how you treat it that can be good or bad. I think that's a better way of putting it. Cry it out actually comes from the, the form of sleep training called extinction. And extinction, cry it out, actually means you do your bedtime routine, you say goodnight, you leave the room, and you don't return. Full stop. You don't return until morning. There's no going back, there's no reassurance, there's no response. It's just you leave them to figure it out. Now that's not something I advocate at all. Um, I don't know any parents that would feel particularly comfortable doing that in this day and age. Um, I'm not judging anyone who does, but it's not for me, it's not part of my ethos and it's not part of my philosophy, and it's not what we do um, at The Sleep Nanny at all. So, is that controlled crying is an interval-based thing. It's where you do give the child some space, but you do return. Um, and that's why it's controlled, so it's, it's suggesting that the child may need a little bit of time to just, you know, adjust <laughs> and, and not have the stimulation of you being around, but that you do come back. That's, in the simplest way of putting it, the difference. 
So the way I look at control crying, the way I, I, um, the way I would use control crying is my version, which is regulated responding, and even that, I, I tend to um, adjust that and bespoke that for the individual family. And the times that I would suggest that would be if you have a particularly alert child who um, just is so stimulated by you even being in the room. If you're even sat across the room doing absolutely nothing but being present and they're still stimulated by you. Some kids do just need their own space and they actually progress faster without, without distressing tears. Maybe a bit of a protest, but nothing more than you'd get if you said no to your four-year-old when they're not allowed to have some sweets. But you know, nothing more than just a little bit of a, mm, that's not fair, um, and, and then they'd be okay. If you have a child who is heavily attached to you or to something that you currently do, I wouldn't use this. So I would I would work on actually reducing their reliance on that thing first and doing that in a very gradual and a very kind, gentle way. So like I said, it's not right for everybody, but it is right for some people. It's the most appropriate way for some people. The key to understanding the difference between cry attack and controlled crying is don't start doing it if you can't see it through. If you're not happy with it, not comfortable with it, if you, I'm talking more about the controlled crying here because I don't really know anyone or have never come across anyone who's quite happy and comfortable with quiet out, <laughs> which is extinction. Um, but when it comes to the, the various types of controlled crying, even if you've got very clear, gentle version of that, like mine, um, if it's not right for you, if you're not happy, not confident, and you have any doubt that you'll be able to actually see it through, don't even begin. Because playing with it actually is worse than not even starting. Usually when parents are stuck and no, they don't know how to help the child learn to sleep, they start clutching at straws and they go, well, I'll try the gradual withdrawal, I'll try control crying, I'll try this. And they just Google something, get the general principles and then plow in and before they know it, after an hour of going in and out, they can't handle it anymore and they just cave and then they go back to doing the thing they were doing. All that will do is teach your child to hold out longer or cry harder. All it will teach your child is that, well, why did you, why did you make me, why did you make me shout so loud for that? Why did I have to wait for it um, if you were going to give it to me anyway? So it's almost unfair on the child to begin down that road unless you're happy and confident and sure that it's right for you and that you can see it through. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. Also, if you press the little bell button, you'll have alerts come through when we release new episodes. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.